Hello everyone. Well, it was is great with great sorrow and great sadness that I bring to you the death of Ivana Trump. Ivana Trump was a wonderful woman so intelligent and beautiful and now Ivana Trump is gone. Now Ivana Trump was found at the bottom of the stairs and while that may sound suspicious like somebody gave her a shove, um, accidents do happen especially when you're in high heels. <laughs> I'm not saying she was wearing high heels. I don't know. Maybe it was bunny slippers, something. Um, slipped and fell down the stairs, was found unresponsive, and was declared dead at the scene. Um, accidents do happen. I'm not going to be paranoid and think that she was murdered or that someone gave her a shove somebody, or that somebody gave her a push. I'm not going to say that because uh, we don't know. We don't know what happened, but we know that Trump, uh, Donald Trump was not involved. Um, he, he was friends with Ivana and uh, she called him frequently, like she said that she called him at least every 14 days to talk to him and they were friends. And uh, despite their messy divorce, and the fact that she wrote a couple of books about him <laughs> just adds to his fame or glamour or whatever. Um, it's true that Donald had an affair. Donald had an affair. He cheated on Ivana with Marla Maples. And Marla Maples was his was his, uh, Marla Maples was his mistress, and she and Donald uh, cheated together, and, um, sorry for, to, to Ivana, if, if, uh, if he hadn't cheated with Marla Maples, she would have been the first lady, and she even called herself the first lady, she considered herself the first first lady because she was married to Donald first. Um, she married four times in her life so she outdid him for for different loves and different wives and different husbands. <laughs> he had he had two wives and she had four husbands so um, she she uh, couldn't be restrained. she couldn't be held down by marriage. she uh, was a free spirit. A free-spirited person that said that she wouldn't allow any man to control her ever again that those were her words she said she would not allow herself to be controlled by men anymore and she meant it and she lived a vivacious life had many loves many men and um, even even her wedding, her second wedding, after she was divorced from Trump, her second wedding after she was divorced from Trump, uh, Trump hosted at Mar-a-Lago. So she got married at Mar-a-Lago and Trump hosted her wedding, but she only stayed married for a year. And then um, the, the, the man that she was with died of cancer in 2021. So there was some grief in Ivana's life um, to lose someone who was so close to her. Um, and Ivana had many clothing lines and, and uh, athletic gear. <laughs> and she was, she was a, supposedly a great athlete herself. Um, she was athletic. She was beautiful. She was a businesswoman. She said she knew how to sign a contract. 
She knew how to sign a contract and she knew how to get business deals done. And she was smart. She was so smart. I mean, she spoke English like a pro, even though she was from Czechoslovakia and born and raised Czechoslovakian. And um, Trump offered to make her the the ambassador to the Czech Republic, but then she said, I'd have to give up New York and I'd have to give up um, L.A. and I'd have to give up Florida. And I, I, can't, I can't be restrained like that to... To the Czech Republic, I I couldn't I couldn't live that way, so I'm not going to be the ambassador. He she turned him down for the ambassadorship because she could not be restrained. She had to jet set and travel, and that's what she enjoyed doing, and that's what she did. She didn't want to be taken away from New York and the high life there and the culture there. She enjoyed culture. She was a very cultured woman. And so um, we extend our deepest condolences to the Trump family, to her three children, Don Jr., Ivanka, and Eric. We, can, we extend our condolences to them. We extend our condolences to the to the Trump children and to her grandchildren. She had 10 grandchildren. And also uh, we extend our condolences to Donald, and the, the president, the Donald. <laughs> and um, we're also hoping that Melania and Barron are holding up at this difficult time and let let's say a prayer let's say a prayer to, together for ivana dear goddess please take ivana up into your paradise and give her all the joy of rediscovering lost loved ones and being reunited with them and dear goddess, please comfort the Trumps in this difficult time and don't let the media be too hard on them or too harsh with them. And please let them find solace in, in their grief over Ivana. Thank you, goddess, for your many blessings. Let it be so. So that that's a prayer for Ivana and for her family, the Trump family. Uh, we're so, so saddened. Um, I'm sad particularly, I have a feeling or sense of loss. One more person that I'll never get to meet. I'll never get to meet her. And so I'm very sad. Um, I would have loved to have met Ivana. <laughs> she was a fixture while I was growing up um, because when, when I was growing up, she was getting divorced from Trump and um, heard about her every single day. She was in the news every single day and they talked about the split between Trump and Ivana every single day. And she's a fighter. She's a fighter. She didn't go down without a fight. Uh, she got quite a bit of property from, from Trump um, init initially from, through, the, through the divorce and built her fortune upon it and that was shrewd of her she was shrewd and she was tough and she was a fighter so she didn't go down easy and now may flights of angels conduct Ivana to her final rest and um, hoping here's hoping that goddess takes Ivana up into her into her uh, warm embrace and welcomes her as a daughter. Um, so Ivana's dead. What else is in the news? Um, I can't get over Ivana dying. I just can't believe she's gone. Just can't believe she's gone. Uh, I have to re read some of her books. <laughs> That'll be interesting to read her juicy books get into a good book by Ivana. 
Um, there, there was a, a, a controversy with Biden. What did Biden do? Well, Bi Biden's in Israel right now, and then he's going to visit the Sheik and beg him for his oil because he stopped oil production here in the United States and then blamed the, the big oil companies for not wanting to drill and not wanting to develop when he's the one that cur curtailed their development and curtailed the, the, uh, the development of oil here in America. But what, what Biden did the other day he signed um, an executive order or maybe a series of executive orders. And these executive orders said that um, that he he was he was uh, modifying or curtailing part of the part of the uh, Supreme Court's decision uh, to overturn Roe v. Wade. And he did this because he felt in his heart that his opinion was better than their opinion and that he was right and they were wrong. So he felt fully justified in signing these executive orders. Uh, there's just one problem with that. Um, it's something called checks and balances. He's basically stomping all, all over the Constitution like so many others other presidents have done and signing an executive order um there's no right of law in an executive order it's one person and their team of lawyers coming up with laws at random that the that the um president signs and executes like a king it's a kingly gesture it's waving your pen and making laws the law of the land right from the executive office and executive orders are awful they're terrible it started with nixon and it just got grew from there um in fact i think the vietnam war was uh, an executive order although the president does have the right to wage war that's the president's one right is to wage war uh, and that's one of his powers although they said that the, the the Vietnam War was never a war that was an extended conflict. So that was not good. Um, but the executive orders are even worse because it's the president taking the power away from the Congress to make laws and saying, I'll make the laws. I'll interpret the Constitution. I'll decide what what's yes and what's no, what's right and what's wrong. So he's basically taking away power from the Supreme Court and whether or not the issue of abortion is worthy of such consideration as worthy of such um, a decision that abortion is so important that's so important for babies to be ripped out of their mother's wombs that's so important that we have to go against the Supreme Court's ruling the Supreme Court's ruling, the law of the land. Um, no, that issue is not, it's not worthy of an executive order that goes against the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court should be respected, okay? The Supreme Court should be respected no matter what they hand down now. No matter what they hand down now. They are still the law of the land and they have a power to check. The Supreme Court has the power to check the power of the president and the power of Congress by interpreting the law. That's the Supreme Court's power and that's their, their role and their position. The Congress has the power to check the Supreme Court by making laws. Um, the president really doesn't have any power to check the power of the Supreme Court at all. That's not the president's job. And so the president is trying to over, uh, overcome and outdo um, the, the, the Constitution of the United States. He's going against the Constitution by, by uh, trying to eliminate the, 
checks and balances of power. And you can bet that these executive orders that he just signed will be challenged in a court of law. It's only a matter of time before someone challenges them. Um, but what he did, um, supposedly he was making it easier for women to protect women from legal prosecution if they go to another state for an abortion. So it wasn't all bad, but he shouldn't have he shouldn't have gone against the Supreme Court's decision because um, that's not the president's place to sign an executive order that curtails the Supreme Court's decision. That's not his place. If you don't like the Supreme Court, change the justices. Well, it's too late to change the justices now because um, there's a bunch of young people in there put there by Trump. A bunch of people retired during Trump's tenure. They chose to retire. And so one of them died and Trump got a chance to replace them. If you didn't like the Supreme Court justices or their decisions, you shouldn't have voted for Trump. But Trump was the legally elected president of the United States. He was legally elected and he had every right to appoint those people to the Supreme Court. So if we don't like their decisions, Vote for someone else next time. If you don't like their decisions, vote for a different president because the president ap appoints the Supreme Court justices. Um, it'll be maybe 50 years, a whole generation of Supreme Court decisions that'll be conservative now. Here's some of the things that are on the chopping block, okay? Um, on the chopping block is... Roe v. Wade, so abortion, so that's already gone. And they decided to leave it up to the states. Um, contraception. Contraception is condoms, baby. Condoms, uh, dental dams, lube, all, all the things that people use that are to, to um, prevent getting pregnant or prevent a baby. Um, including O-rings and implants in a woman's uh, uterus, all of those things that are contraception are under attack by um, Clarence Thomas said that they were coming after contraception next. And why do they, why do they want to take away contraception? Just prevent a baby from being born in the first place. Prevent sperm from being united with an egg, which would constitute a new human life. Why do they want to, to curtail contraception? Because the Bible told them that um, there's some guy in the Bible... Um, that spilled his seed on the ground, pulled out and spilled his seed on the ground, and uh, God cursed him and did horrible things to him and killed him. Um, I think his name was Onan. And um, then, then because of that, because it was in the Bible, they decided God didn't like contraception, put away that condom, right? <laughs> Put away that condom. We want as many babies born as possible. So if you're going to have sex, you better be prepared to have a baby. That's the message. That's the message of, of Clarence Thomas to the whole world. We're going to force you to have a baby if you want sex. Um, craziness, I know. It's crazy. That's the way it goes. What else is on the chopping block? Well, gay rights is on the chopping block. Um, and possibly transgender also. I, don't, I still don't get why transgender is such a big issue now. Why is that such a big issue? There's so few transgender people. I mean, I can count them on the fingers of both hands. There's that few transgender people. And... But they're making a big deal out of it. It's a it's a big controversy. Um, transgender, um, and more and more people are choosing to declare themselves transgender. 
just so that they can partake of the controversy. <laughs> that must be it. They want to partake of the controversy. Um, I could have easily declared myself transgender, but I chose not to. I chose not to because I, I chose to be a lesbian woman. I chose that for myself. And um, now transgender people are beloved, but um, I chose not to be transgender because I preferred being a woman. I, I prefer being a woman. I don't want to chop off my breasts. No, no, I do not want breast reduction surgery. I don't want to turn myself inside out. <laughs> um, no. But um, that's my decision. Now, um, so what, what, is, what is on the chopping block? Gay marriage. Gay marriage, and Clarence Thomas added this as an afterthought, gay sex. So they want to go back all the way to the bad old days when cops would do sting operations on gay men and maybe even lesbians and catch them in the act of having sex and then arrest them. So it's back to the bad old days. Back to the bad old days when when sodomy laws were on the books. They want to rule that sodomy is a crime. Why? Because the Bible says so. Or at least they think the Bible says so. That's a controversy whether the Bible says so because Sodom and Gomorrah um, the issue with Sodom was more uh, issue of rape rather than uh, gay sex. But um, also it says that if a, a man lies with another man in a woman's bed or, um, or lies like a woman in a woman's bed that uh, it's, 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 it's however you choose to con to to uh, translate it. Um, big controversy there uh, as to whether they it's considered an abomination by the Bible or not. Um, because some gay men thought that it was translate translated as um, "Thou shalt not lie with with a man in a woman's bed." And other people say that it says, thou shalt not lie like a woman in bed with a man. So they, it's a controversy with it's, what it says. It's um, awkward. It's an awkward translation. It's awkwardly written. Probably because it was unheard of in those days and there really wasn't a word for it. So they had to um, specify and they, they, it was written awkwardly by the, by the author, which was probably a man, a straight man that was aghast at men being together. There was nothing about lesbians. Apparently lesbians weren't important, but the sodomy laws apply to lesbians too. They think it's an abomination. So they're going to take us back there won't be any more gay marriage and gay sex will be a crime. So we're going all the way back to the bad old days uh, of Stonewall riots. We're just going backwards. And it's all because of the uh, religious sentiment of, of six out of nine justices on the Supreme Court. And um, they shouldn't be forcing their religion down people's throats. It's, it's obscene and the Constitution protects separation of church and state and definitely the Supreme Court counts as the state so they should not be force enforcing their religion or their religious sentiments or their religious beliefs on the populace just because the Bible says so they but that's what they were born for right it's their time to shine. It's their time to promote their religion and force the Bible down everybody's throat. Um, which is one of the reasons why I rejected the Bible because it was being forced down people's throats. And I felt that was just wrong. 
And now, of course, I don't like the Bible very much. Um, but that 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 being said, if they do roll back this this uh, the these decisions, if they do roll back gay marriage and roll back gay sex and roll back contraception. There's going to be an outcry. It's going to be an outcry and people will do everything in their power to get the the um, Supreme Court justices to change. It, it, there will be a whole generation that will live under these laws, these restrictive laws, and they will do anything, anything at all, to get rid of these Supreme Court justices. It will be a big win for the Democrats. And um, Biden is trying to get out of his base. Biden said uh, everyone who's a woman, all women, all women, you should all be outraged that your right to abortion is being taken away, so you should all vote Democrat in November. Uh, yeah, but you've been starving babies. You've been, you were responsible for runaway inflation that makes everything cost more at the store, including gas. Gasoline has gone up like 39%. Um, you, you um, abandoned Americans in Afghanistan and left them to a to a horrible fate at the hands of the Taliban. And um, you've you've lied to us. You keep lying to us. You keep making excuses for the for the runaway inflation. It's anything but your fault. And it's oh, it's Putin. It's the war in Ukraine. And also you've been sending billions of dollars worth of weapons to Ukraine so that the Ukrainians and Russians can kill each other. What more do we need to vote to vote uh, Republican? Won't you be surprised when women turn out on November, in November to vote Republican? after all the things that the Biden administration did. And Biden's uh, approval rating is at an all-time low. Uh, his former supporters, the ones that voted him into office, um, now about 39% of them uh, don't like Biden anymore and would vote, vote against Biden. But if it comes to a race between Biden and Trump again, who knows which way it'll go? Because Trump is a wild card, right? Um, maybe people will feel sorry for him because of Ivana's death, but who knows? Who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe if Trump says nothing else and doesn't make any speeches, maybe he can get in next November, or in not next November, but a few Novembers from now. 2024 during the election maybe he can get in easily if he says nothing if he doesn't open his mouth and incriminate himself any further although he certainly said enough already but um maybe he has a chance maybe trump does have a chance against biden after all trump has a lot of supporters in the republican party it's it's anybody's guess who knows which way it'll go so in closing um we love you ivana we love you forever and uh we'll miss you horribly we'll mi miss your clothing line and maybe your clothing line will keep going i don't know but um we'll miss you we'll miss you ivana and um our condolences to the Trump family and hope you all take care, take care and um, do fine. We hope you do fine. And I'll see you next time.